<laughs> Judges chapter 14. We get to start the read the story of Samson today, <laughs> which was just a teaser yesterday, I guess. <laughs> All right, Judges chapter 14. Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. In it was a swarm of bees and some honey, which he scooped out with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it, but he did not tell them that it, he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now his father went down to see the, the woman, and Samson made a feast there, as was customary for bridegrooms. When he appeared, he was given 30 companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it, he replied. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. For three days, they could not give the answer. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to rob us? Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? She, re she cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him. She in turn explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the town said, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men, stripped them of their belongings, gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. <laughs> Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house. Samson's wife was given to the friend who had attended him at his wedding. Wow. Judges chapter 15. Later on, at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let her go in. I was so sure you thoroughly hated her, he said, that I gave her to your friend. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Samson said to them, this time I have a right to get even with the Philistines. I will really harm them. So he went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. Then he fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches, and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burned up the shocks and standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked, who, who did this? They were told, Samson, the Timnite son-in-law, oh, sorry, the Timnite son-in-law, because his wife was given to his friend. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. Samson said to them, since you've acted like this, I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Etam. The Philistines went up and camped in Judah, spreading out near Lehi. The men of Judah asked, why have you come to fight us? We have come to take Samson prisoner, they said, to do to him as he did to us. 
Then 3,000 men from Judah went down to the cave in the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us? He answered, I merely did to them what they did to me. They said to him, We've come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. Samson said, Swear to me that you won't kill me yourselves. Agreed, they answered. We will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him up to, from the rock. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting. The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, With a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys of them. With the donkey's jawbone, I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was called Ramath Lehi. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, You must have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow place in Lehi, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned, and he revived. So the spring was called En Hakor, and it is still there in Lehi. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in and spent the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, At dawn, we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh throngs that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh throngs, I'm sorry, thongs that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the thongs as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. <laughs> he said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, until now you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin of the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, and she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. Then Delilah saw that he had told her everything. She sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more, he said, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands, having put him to sleep on her lap. 
she called a man to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me. O God, please strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines from my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel 20 years.